correlation conveys relationship between two variables that have been transformed into z-scores. So in other words, correlation is conveying relationship between two standardized variables. Now sometimes looking at relationship uh, between two standardized variables, that is relationship between two sets of z-scores, is the most effective tool for looking at relationship. Yet sometimes one wants to look at relationship not between two uh, sets of z-scores, but rather uh, between two variables measured in their original measurement units. In other words, between wh whatever uh, metrics were actually used um, in uh, creating the two variables. I mention again, the original units of measurement of a variable are, are often called raw scores. So sometimes we want to look at relationship between raw scores. So as mentioned earlier, um, regression involves predicting scores on one variable from those on one or more others. Now, one can think of correlation as, in essence, bivariate standardized regression. I mean, bivariate because there are a total of two variables, one independent and one dependent, standardized because we're dealing with z-scores. On the other hand, regression as being presented now is in more fully termed bivariate unstandardized regression. In other words, regression as we're going to study it now is going to look at relationship uh, between two variables, an independent and a dependent, with values expressed as raw scores. So we have, we're using unstandardized variables as we pr pursue regression here. And, and as I mentioned a little bit ago, at the end of the course, we may have time to look at multivariate regression. In other words, regressions that have uh, two or more independent variables. So the, the emphasis in regression is on prediction. We've already looked at uh, the formula for predicting z-scores. That, uh, that is, we've looked at prediction for the bivariate standardized regression uh, equation. Uh, but now we're looking at uh, the unstandardized regression equation. So uh, let's go over some of the symbols. The y-hat or the y caret conveys to you the predicted value of the dependent variable. The x is the value of x, that is to say the value of, an, of uh, x for an individual case. And I mean, I mean predicted y here is pertaining to the predicted value for an individual case. We're going to learn about a, which is termed the constant, and b, which is the regression coefficient, or more formally, the unstandardized regression coefficient. Now we're going to term this equation here uh, the regression equation, and it is the equation for the regression line. We will take a look at the regression line uh, subsequently. Right now we're going to study more what it is that A and B mean and convey. So then A in the uh, regression equation is the constant. The constant is, and I mean to say can be interpreted as and conveys to you the value of Y when X equals zero. So you look at the constant in, a, in the regression equation, you look at A, and that is telling you the predicted value of Y when X equals zero. Another term for A is the intercept. In sometimes when you see graphs, I mean often when you see graphs, the Y 
axis is indeed located at x equals zero. In other words, the y axis intersects the x axis where x has the value of zero. So if that is so, then A conveys to you the value at which the regression line intersects the y-axis. B is your regression coefficient, and it is conveying to you change in the predicted value of y as x increases by 1. Another interpretation of B is B conveys to you the slope of the regression line. But I mean the slope of the, I mean this is indeed a definition for slope. So uh, the change in the predicted value of Y as X goes up by one, uh, that's the same thing as slope. B is conveying both slope and the predicted change in Y as X goes up by one. Let's work with an example. Uh, in our example, our dependent variable y is going to be the birth weight of a newborn in ounces, and our independent variable x is going to be the number of uh, prenatal visits. Here is our regression equation. So uh, predicted y equals 76.86 plus 1.73 times the number of visits. In this equation, uh, 76.86 is the value of the constant A, and 1.73 is the value of the regression coefficient B. So you, you look at this equation, and the value of A is telling you that uh, the predicted birth weight for a mother who has made zero visits is 76.86 ounces. So, I mean, zero visits, that's x equals zero. So, where the independent variable assumes the value of zero, our predicted birth weight is conveyed by the constant and is 76.86. B conveys to you that as the number in visits goes up by one. So let's just speak more pragmatically. So let's say for each additional visit, predicted change in birth weight is 1.73 ounces. So for each additional visit, we predict an increase of 1.73 ounces. I, I just want to make a quick note. Uh, you know, in this introductory text, you are not going to have to calculate A, and you are not going to have to calculate B. So A and B will be given, and you'll need to uh, work with those facts uh, predominantly to uh, find the predicted value of Y, and to do a, f a few other things as well. But, they're, but you're not going to calculate A or B. What we're going to do first here is um, make a prediction for an individual case in our, in our sample. So suppose that Mrs. Antonelli has made six visits. What will be the predicted birth weight of Mrs. Antonelli's newborn? And we use the regression equation to find that out. Here is our regression equation. So these values, here's the value of A, uh, here's the value of B. These values are given to you. Uh, so to compute the predicted Y, one simply plugs in uh, the value of X for the given case. So the value of X for Mrs. Antonelli is 6. She made 6 visits. So here are the calculations carried out. And so our best prediction is that uh, Mrs. Antonelli's newborn will weigh 87.24 ounces. The graph here shows the regression line. 
and indeed the regression equation is the uh, equation uh, for this straight line. Now in this particular graph uh, the x-axis does indeed uh, is indeed intersected by the y-axis at the value of zero. And so therefore this regression line intersects the y-axis at the value of the constant. So you can see that the intersection here is at uh, 76.86, the value of the constant. The slope of this regression line is 1.73, which is conveyed by the regression coefficient b. And uh, to express this differently, you know, as x goes up by 1, which is to say for each additional visit, so as x increments by 1, the regression line is increasing by 1.73. B is conveying the slope of the regression line. And indeed, as I mentioned earlier, uh, this equation is the equation for this particular line. So let's get some practice at the kinds of uh, problems that uh, I'd like you to be able to answer. So here we have uh, a regression equation, and our regression equation is that predicted y equals 5 plus 2 times x. So in this regression equation, a equals 5. So I mean, here is our a, and b equals 2. So there's, there's b. So let's go ahead and respond to these questions. What is the constant? Well, I mean, indeed, the constant is a, but what I'm looking for is the value of the constant, and the, uh, the constant equals 5. Uh, what is the predicted value of y when x equals 0? Well, this is, in essence, a definition of the constant. Uh, the predicted value of y when x equals 0 is precisely the information that the constant is conveying to you. So our response to this question is that the predicted value of y when x equals 0 is 5. What is the regression coefficient? I mean, it is simply the, uh, the number that it appears in the regression equation immediately prior to x. I mean, our regression coefficient, same thing as and symbolized by b, our regression coefficient is 2. Uh, what is the slope of the regression line? Well, I mean, you just really need to remember, I mean, this is what uh, one of the things that the regression coefficient is conveying to you. So the slope of the regression line is 2. Finally, uh, as x increases by 1, what is the change in the predicted value of y? Well, again, th this is an interpretation of the regression coefficient. Um, so as the regression coefficient conveys precisely this to us, so that as x increases by 1, the change in the predicted value of y in this case is 2, which is to say the value of the regression coefficient. Now here is some practice with prediction. Here's our regression equation. Um, we have the same uh, regression equation as on the prior slide. So let's go ahead and carry out uh, some of these calculations below. What is the predicted value of y when x equals 4? So, I mean, we solve this simply by plugging in the values uh, from the regression equation. So the predicted value of y when x equals 4 is going to be 5 plus 2 times 4. So the value of x is 4. The, the regression coefficient is 2, so 2 times 4 is 8, and then we add to that a value of the constant, which is 5, so we're getting 5 plus 8 or 13. So the predicted value of y 
in this first example is 13. And let's do this uh, second example. In this second example, we're going to plug the value of 2 into the regression equation. So the b equals 2, x equals 2, 2 times 2 is 4, plus the constant of 5 yields 9. So here our predicted value of y is 9. This third one, I mean, it's a shortcut. I mean, so the value of x here is 0. Uh, so the predicted value of y is simply the, the constant. You know, when x equals 0, we're getting 2 times 0 or 0, and so the predicted value of y is simply 5. And for our final example, we have a value of minus 2 for x, so we'd multiply 2 times minus 2, and we'd get minus 4, and we would have 5 plus minus 4, and that equals 1. So in our final example, the predicted value of y is 1. Let's do some uh, comparing and contrasting of, of correlation and regression. And as I'm using the term regression, I'm meaning unstandardized regression. So Pearson's r is a standardized coefficient. It's expressing change in terms of standard deviation units. Pearson's r does indeed convey to you size of association. And indeed, I mean, to get, get a feel for size of association, which obviously is a synonym for strength of association, uh, you look at table 8.2 in the text. Now on the other hand, b, the regression coefficient, is an unstandardized coefficient it's conveying change in, a, in original measurement units rather than in, in terms of standard deviation units. So B does not convey to you size or strength of association. Let's do some interpretation of values of B and of R. So in our first example you examine the association between closeness of parent-child relationship and behavior problems, perhaps each being measured by some multi-item scale. Suppose that uh, you carry out a regression, and I mean in an unstandardized regression, and in that regression you find that B equals minus 0.17. So this is conveying to you as x goes up by 1, so we're meaning to say as parent-child closeness score goes up by 1, the predicted behavior problem score decreases by 0.17 units. So, so that's, that's a valid interpretation, but because our units are not standardized, B does not convey to you strength of association. Now, on the other hand, suppose that you conducted um, a, uh, a study, and we can actually, for learning purposes, just presume that we're using the same uh, variables for X and Y. Uh, suppose that you find that uh, in standardized regression, which is the same thing as correlation, that r equals minus 0.52, so that you're finding that the correlation between closeness of parent-child relationship and behavior problems uh, is minus 0.52. So I'm, so I'm seeing this is a typo. This should be point fi minus 0.52, or should so, it's conveying to you, as x goes up by one standard deviation, that is to say, as closeness of parent-child relationship goes up by one standard deviation, behavior problems are predicted to decrease by 0.52 standard deviations. And unlike a b, the unstandardized regression, regression coefficient, R, because it conveys change in standardized units, that is in z-scores, 
it does indeed convey strength of association. So we could reference table 8.2 of our qualitative descriptors and a, an R of minus 0.52 is conveying strong negative relationship. Clearly an advantage of R over B is that R does indeed convey strength of association, whereas B does not. Now let me just point out that when uh, variables are in familiar units of measure, the interpretation of B, the unstandardized coefficient, is straightforward and intuitive, or at least often it is so. So for instance, um, think about our birth weight example. B was very easy to interpret there. I mean, I, I think the value of B was 1.73, and so we knew that for each additional visit, uh, predicted birth weight uh, went up by 1.73 ounces. So the idea is the count of visits is straightforward to us. It, 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 it's just a count. Uh, so also is ounces. We're familiar with, with ounces. So that when we hear the value of B, it, it has direct intuitive meaning because we're familiar with both of the units of measure. They're, they're tangible, they're straightforward, they're easy to understand. So when you've got two variables and both are tangible and, and familiar, B is easier uh, to interpret in that situation and is intuitive. You know, on, on the other hand, uh, in our most recent example where our variables were closeness of a parent-child relationship and behavior problem score, in neither of those situations was the unit of measure tangible and familiar. I mean, you get uh, social science research scales and the the scores may range on one scale, for instance, from uh, 10 to 70, and on another from 23 to 156. I mean, it's, it's going to be different for each one. And so uh, the fact that these units are unfamiliar and, and, and just not straightforward uh, in, in situations where that is so, B is, doesn't make the straightforward intuitive sense that it does, uh, as for instance in our birth weight example. I don't know if I have uh, falsely conveyed that uh, R uh, is superior to B. I mean, I, I like to see R and B as complementary. I mean, the advantage of R is that it conveys the strength of association the advantage of B is that it conveys relationship in original units of measure and often that's helpful and uh, preferred. So in, in conclusion, uh, both of these measures are useful and, uh, and in essence most often they're complementary. At the uh, beginning of the chapter I mentioned to you that R, which is to say Pearson's R, and I really want to speak more broadly and say correlation almost always, and at least in introductory texts and applications, correlation is conveying relationship uh, between two numeric variables. But there are also some measures which are deemed correlational measures. In other words, they have a great deal in common with Pearson's R. And uh, there are correlational measures that are used in situations uh, where both variables are not uh, numeric. Uh, one such correlational measure is phi. So phi is the correlation between uh, two dichotomous variables. When you have two dichotomous variables, that is two variables each with two categories, you can indeed, uh, and this is arbitrary, but even if arbitrary, you, c you can do so. You can view one category as high and the other as low. So if you want, you can, for instance, view yes as high and no as low. Or you could view success as high and failure uh, to meet a criterion as low. 
it is the case uh, that uh, when one variable is uh, scored as high and the other is scored as low, uh, that, uh, researchers often term the, score the high category as a 1 and the low is a 0. So for instance, you would make success have the value 1 and failure the value 0. So if you have two binary variables and uh, you, you score one category as 1, and the other as zero for each of those two variables, then you've, then you've got uh, two variables, both with numeric values. I mean, the, the values are only uh, comprised of ones and zeros. Uh, phi, or sometimes it, phi, uh, is the correlation between two dichotomous variables. And you do see it sometimes, and uh, you can apply the, uh, uh, roughly, the uh, qualitative descriptors that are used for R in Table 8.2. Finally, a second correlational measure is Spearman's R, and Spearman's R is described as the correl is defined as the correlation between two rank orderings. And so the idea is you can go to Table 8.2 and those descriptors in Table 8.2 will work reasonably well for both of these correlational measures. And that wraps up our discussion of correlation and regression. So the next thing we're going to tackle is relationship where one variable is categorical and the second is numeric.